All right, let's take a look at the arpeggiator effects, effects six and seven. I'll try to demonstrate first how they work. They can be kind of tricky. So each SFX can be divided into eight groups of four. So here's a group of four, 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 group of four. Uh, you get the idea. When effects six and seven are on a row, Pico eight will take all of the notes in that group of four and loop or arpeggiate them very quickly. So here we've got a group of four. And if I apply six or seven to the row, nothing's going to happen here because all of the notes are of the same pitch. So for it to work, for it to work, you need at least two different notes in this group of four. So I'll just change this to C1 here. Or if I, they're all four different notes. The difference between six and seven is the rate or speed of the arpeggiation. So here is effect seven, which is slower than six. And six is faster. Actually, I'll loop that so you can really tell. When I change the speed of the SFX, the rows are going to go by faster or slower but the rate of arpeggiation will always stay the same. So you'll notice here that it's all staying the same. Now, once you get to speed eight, then the rates change. Six and seven will be faster at speeds eight and below and slower at speeds nine and above. So here's eight and below. And once you go to speed nine, you'll hear that it goes, gets faster. And same thing happens with number, with effect seven. So for the row that the effect is on, Pico 8 will also take the instrument and the volume information and apply that to all of the notes in the arpeggiation. So arpeggiation only applies to the notes and not the volume or instruments. So I'll give you an example of that. I'll arpeggiate the same notes but with different instruments and different volumes. And I'll make it really slow. In the latest version of Pico 8, this is alpha point 11, uh, hidden note data is shown when the arpeggiation effect is applied to a group of four. So let's say you want to apply arpeggiation to rows one, three, and four, but you want to silence row two. You can still adjust the note on row two to make the arpeggiation sound good while on rows one, three, and four. So I can change this, just change this to a really odd note so that you can hear it. Yeah, so you can hear that this note is still being played when we're on rows one, three, and four, but it, the row is silent when the cursor gets to row two. So the most traditional way to use the arpeggiation effect is like what you hear from classic chiptune music where you arpeggiate the chord and the chord progression and you use the volume column to emphasize certain rhythms. So I just loaded up a track that I arranged that uses this more traditional arpeggiation effect. Uh, you might recognize the, the, the sound. So all the arpeggiation is happening over here. On its own. So you can hear there's accent where the where the volume is higher. So you're gonna hear accent here, accent here, accent here. Oh, and of course, accent here and here. Another way to use the arpeggiation effects is to emphasize a melody. So let's say I wrote a melody like this.
So I'll play around with effects six and seven, but first all the notes need to be different, or at least you need two different notes in that group of four. So I'm going to go between, I'm going to change the notes with the in the octave like this. And let's add them, add effects seven to all of them. And then add volume tails. And I want to make this longer. And then I'll add maybe effect six here, see what that sounds like. And maybe a different instrument. And then maybe let's arpeggiate this down the octave. So I just pulled up uh, another composition that I wrote where I use the arpeggiation effects as a, a kind of wild card to create melodic embellishments that I wouldn't normally think of. Uh, so let's just have this play this and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so in SFX1 here, I added the 7 effect here to create a cool little a little trill that if, if it wasn't there, but then with effect seven, yeah, this is probably something that I just threw in there just for fun to see what it sounded like. And I think it happens again. There's another one on five. I've added effect six. Now somehow it's arpeggiating all four of these. There's no way I would have been able to predict exactly how it was going to sound, but it would have been something that I just added in for fun to see what it sounded like. Without it, it would have sounded like it sounds like this. With effect six. And with effect seven, maybe effect seven. Yeah, effect seven just doesn't, it just doesn't sound as neat. So effect six sounds better. So yeah, there's some ideas for effect six and seven. Hopefully that's helpful. Leave me a comment below if you have any other ideas on how to use six and seven. And I'll see you for the next video.